I'm Dr. Sujal Mandavia, Chief Medical Officer at Carbon Health. With the recent approval and distribution of COVID-19 vaccines, we are hopeful and really excited that we're entering a whole new phase of the pandemic, which will turn out to be the beginning of the end of it. Let's talk about the two vaccine candidates that have been approved as of January 2021. Both are similar in that both are mRNA vaccines, uh, but they're made by different companies. There's the Moderna vaccine and the Pfizer vaccine. As I mentioned, both are mRNA vaccines. These are vaccines that are built on a technology that is not new, but this is the first time we've used it for an immunization against an infection like COVID-19. Both of these vaccines require um, some very special handling and cold storage uh, requirements that will make the logistics and distribution of the vaccine a little more complicated than the flu vaccine. But nonetheless, there uh, are a lot of resources uh, being applied to getting that vaccine out and into the communities that need it. Both of these vaccines will require two doses. The Moderna vaccine requires a second dose or booster after 28 days, and the Pfizer vaccine has its booster at the 21 day mark. Let's dive a little bit deeper into what an mRNA vaccine is and how it works. mRNA vaccines are new, but not necessarily a new technology. mRNA has been used as a technology for the last couple of decades in other applications, but this is the first time it's being used to help manufacture a vaccine that's effective against an infection. So mRNA is really the blueprint that our cells use to produce proteins. What the mRNA vaccine is doing then is delivering the blueprint that helps to actually manufacture the protein that the virus makes that is contained in the coding or the spike proteins of the virus. By doing this, our body produces that protein our immune system can recognize it as, as not being part of ourselves or see it as foreign and produce both antibodies and cells that fight that, that protein and that infection so that it gets neutralized before it can make us sick. Vaccinating the whole country is gonna be a very large and complex undertaking. For that reason, it's being phased. Part of the reason why we're phasing this is to really give priority to both populations that are the most fragile and at risk of dying from the virus, as well as those who take care of those who are sick from the virus. For that reason, the first phase really contains all healthcare workers who are on the front lines, as well as uh, people who are in long-term care facilities who are at, we've seen already, have been at the highest risk of uh, dying from this virus. The next phase will be really those essential workers that help to keep our society going. Uh, there are many different types of job classes that fit into this. And once we get those folks vaccinated, we can start to move on to people who have underlying medical conditions or those who again demonstrate an increased risk of mortality from COVID-19 infection. Once we've taken care of these higher priority groups, then we can get the vaccine out to the rest of the population. So after I get vaccinated, does that mean I can throw away my mask? Unfortunately not. And I'll tell you why. What we're very certain about with the vaccine is that it's shown to be effective in preventing people from getting severe symptoms that might require either care in an emergency department at the hospital or the need to be hospitalized or death. What we're not certain of yet is whether the vaccine is effective at actually preventing transmission of the virus. So there could be a scenario where you could get exposed to COVID-19, get infected, not have symptoms, and unknowingly potentially transmit the virus. So that's why it's gonna be so important for us to maintain the habits that have kept us safe during the pandemic. That's masking and social distancing. Those are the seatbelt and the airbag that you've used during the pandemic, and right now those aren't going away. I think we'll get more clarity on that probably within the next few months as the studies are gathering more data about the specific question around transmission. So can I still get sick from COVID-19 after being vaccinated? Well, the simple answer is yes, you can, but your risk of getting infected and getting symptomatic 
especially with severe symptoms that require either hospitalization or a trip to the emergency department, are very low. We know that it's 95% effective in preventing those types of symptoms. After one dose of the vaccine, we believe that it's probably about 50% effective in preventing severe symptoms, but that jumps to 95% effectiveness after the second dose, probably within a week or two after receiving that second dose. So you could see that it's really important that the second dose is almost more important than the first. So if I get the COVID-19 vaccine this year, do I still need to be vaccinated for the flu? The answer to that is absolutely yes. COVID-19 vaccine is obviously not effective against preventing the flu and flu still exists and still causes severe symptoms and morbidity and mortality. It's really important that we protect ourselves from all fronts from these pathogens that we know are circulating around the community. As the vaccine is coming out, I've been asked a lot of questions about how much it's going to cost. So because the federal government was able to fund and subsidize the manufacturing and procure supply of the vaccine, the actual cost of the vaccine will not produce any out-of-pocket cost for anybody who receives the vaccine. There may be an administrative fee charged for actually administering the vaccine. However, we believe that those fees will be covered by insurance plans for somebody who is insured, and there are government funds available to help to offset that cost and prevent any out-of-pocket for those who have no insurance. Recently, we've been hearing about different strains of the virus. This actually doesn't come as a surprise because these types of viruses, especially RNA viruses, tend to mutate almost every day. What we haven't seen before this, or at least detected, are stable mutations that have caused any difference in how the virus is behaving or affecting us. Related to that, I get questions about whether the vaccine is going to be effective against different strains. And the answer to that is not entirely clear yet, but every indication so far for the mutations we've seen up until now in January of 2021, lead us to believe that the vaccine will still be effective. Because we anticipate mutations, there is a very good chance that we will be looking at an annual update on this vaccine, just as we have with the flu vaccine. Now, the difference between what we've experienced with flu vaccine and its production and this mRNA vaccine is really night and day in that this mRNA vaccine technology allows us to update that vaccine within a matter of weeks rather than months or years. So that's incredible and I think will help us to be able to respond if we find that the vaccine effectiveness is not where it needs to be to control the pandemic and create the herd immunity that we're looking for.